Hi. I know. I'm a bit shit, aren't I? Now, someone sent me a question and I thought, that's a good question. A while ago, it was probably about six weeks ago now, I thought, that's a good question. I'll do that in your YouTube video um, and I'll do that tomorrow. And I'm doing it now, which isn't tomorrow. But like I said, I've been a bit shit with these. So the question was, is this somebody who's in eating disorder recovery? Obviously. And it's somebody who has had a strong exercise component to their eating disorder. And so they understand what they need to do in terms of that, which is stop, right? And the problem, or at least the question that they had, was due to a previous accident, which I can't remember what the accident was, but due to a previous accident um, where they hurt their back really badly, they have been given by a physiotherapist back exercises that they have to do or should do on a daily basis. And so they're sort of thinking, okay, well, I'm supposed to stop doing everything. And they also have identified that there is a disordered component that attaches themselves onto this, these back exercises and sort of turns it into more than it should actually have to be. And so they recognize that there are neural pathways around that that need rewiring. And so the question really was, well, how do I manage this? How do I do what I need to do in order to keep my back healthy um, and engage in eating disorder recovery? So there's no like, I can't give anyone for anything. Well, that's not true. A lot of the time I can. But I was going to say, I can't give a blunt answer like this is the way that you should do it and this is the way that your body will react because I don't know how people's body is going to react to things. I also don't know the degree of this person's back problems I've not spoken to their physiotherapist and most importantly I'm not a doctor so but all I can do is look at that scenario and think what would I have done when I was in recovery because a lot of the time we we have to we have to negotiate sort of situations and try and do the best that we can that's all that we can do so what I probably would have done in that situation is I would have said you know what, I'm not going to do my back exercises for a couple of months. And also knowing that if I stop exercise, stop lower level movement, really hammer recovery, I can do a lot of neural rewiring in a couple of months. I can change a lot of that fear response. And then after a couple of months, I might reevaluate where I think I am in recovery and then whether or not I can start to re-engage in those back exercises or not. And I'd have to make that decision based on whether my fear of weight gain is rewired, how well it's rewired and how well I think that my exercise compulsion is rewired. And I might at that part, at that junction, think, you know what, it's still too soon to go back and I might make the choice to not do those exercises or I might make the choice, maybe I should start to re-engage in them as well. And of course, what's also going to factor into that decision is how your back's feeling and what your physiotherapist saying, is saying about the state of your back. Now, I think though, even then, if I say, for example, recovery is going great and I think, you know, it really should be time to do these back exercises. And remember, these exercises are not like cardio or like stuff that, generally an eating disorder loves to engage in they are sort of floor-based exercises that don't really even take that long you know think more along the sort of pilates yoga lines and stuff and so they are the type of things that would be most appropriate to bring back in when somebody is sort of doing well in recovery like if it was a running thing or something like that we've got to be a lot more careful with that and we've got to push that out longer but with the back exercises i think the, the, the thing to remember is that um, physiotherapists, they're used to dealing with general people who don't have eating disorders. And for a general person who doesn't have an eating disorder, say if your physio gave you a list of back exercises, they'll tell you to do it every day because they know that you're not going to do it every day. <laughs> they'll tell you to do it every day And they'll consider it a win if you do it three times a week. And the reality is, is that most people, three times a week is the maximum they're going to do it. Because that's just how people, that's how normal people without eating disorders are. That sort of thing, back exercises, fucking boring. Who wants to do that? I wouldn't. (laughs) 
<laughs> so it's a bit, you know, it's a, it's a bit like now me. If I make myself, I think, oh, my hamstrings feel a bit tight. I should probably stretch my hips or something like that. And then another part of me is like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm not going to do that, am I? And I don't. I just don't. can't remember the first, the last time I did any sort of stretching. I know I should do it, but I just don't. Whereas when I have an eating disorder, oh, my God, I'd be on that mat stretching, 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 stretching everything that needed to be stretched, stretching everything that didn't need to be stretched. And I do it every single day, sometimes twice, maybe more. <laughs> You know, so people with eating disorders, we take every anything like that and we're going to do it to the letter. We're going to do it to the T. Anything like we're going to do it really. We're like the gold star pupils for the PTs. And most people don't do that. And so if someone says to you, if your PT something says to you, yeah, you've got to do this every day, they'd be, they'd be happy with three or four times a week. And so that's kind of what you have to mentally put yourself into. I'm not going to do this perfectly. I'm going to do it sometimes, maybe when I remember, but I'm not going to let my brain grab onto it and turn it into that again. And because as soon as your brain does that, you're sort of moving along those neural pathways of compulsion again with stuff. And um, the reason that we feel that we want to do that is because there's anxiety behind not doing it. So it's actually a lot of the time people look at people with eating disorders being so meticulous and we think that that's because we're OCD or we're type A personalities or we're perfectionists but it's not a lot of the time it's what I call negative state relief the reason that you are acting in that way is because if you don't you get anxiety so we're actually acting in that way to relieve a negative state not because it necessarily puts us in a positive state and so I guess the answer with the thing like that, with the back exercises, is like, I can't give you a set time scale when you should re-engage in those back exercises. I can't do that. But all I can say to you is that when you are considering re-engaging in those back exercises, watch your brain. Don't let it get like that about it. Let it be, force it to be normal about it. Force it to be someone who does them some days, but then some days forgets. And even because your brain won't forget because you're still in recovery and you've still got those disordered elements what you're going to do is you're going to try and act like a normal member of the population which means that you might do that back exercises one day and then you're going to tell yourself I'm actually not going to do it tomorrow I'm going to forget to do it tomorrow because that's sort of what a normal person would do and you've got to force yourself into those patterns rather than allow yourself to take anything like that and turn it into that disordered pattern of I'm definitely doing this every day at two minutes past nine until 22 minutes past nine and then I'm going to be like you know meh, stop it that's you've got to push yourself to start acting normal and I think that we can make eating disorders we can make everything so complicated can't we but I think the main thing that when I was in recovery is that I knew I'm not normal I'm not like a normal person and I'm done. I just want to be a normal person now. I just want to be like everybody else. And so then one of the thoughts I was always carrying through to me myself was just fucking act like a normal person. Just act like a normal person. Do it like a normal person would do it. What would a normal person do right now? Right, that's what I'm going to do. I was pretending to be normal. My brain wanted to take me off on all these different things and I'd be like, no. What's the most normal thing I could do right now? Got it. That's what I'm going to do. I pretended to be normal because we can't stop being a person with an eating disorder whilst we are still acting like a person with an eating disorder. That's really important to understand. You cannot stop being a person with an eating disorder whilst you are still acting like a person with an eating disorder. All right. Bye.